Now let's take a look at some of those uh, pictures. The first one is coming from Bagada Expressway in Lagos State, Southwest Nigeria, showing a truck carrying tons of blocks, which the reporter is worried could cause serious damage to the roads. And all the way from Chukun local government area of Kaduna State comes this picture showing a health center that has been left uncompleted. The government's attention is being drawn to the facility, which is unsafe for patients and staff alike. Unfortunately, it seems to be the only public facility offering such services in the area. Uh, there's a damaged bridge in Adamawa State believed to be as a result of the Boko Haram insurgency from the pictures you see there. Now, eyewitness reporter says the people of Michika local government have been cut off from Yola, the state capital. And from Bokani, Niger State, is a picture showing another collapsed bridge that makes it easier to connect Kaduna to Lagos State. Our eyewitness reporter says the journey is now more difficult and even costly. Now, thank you for those pictures, and we ask that you please keep them coming. Now, Channels Television followed the lead of our eyewitness reporters and even visited the sites of the collapsed bridges in Niger and Adamawa states. Nature at its worst, and when it is at this stage, the result can be catastrophic. The evidence of this is here in Adamawa state, where the force of flood waters causes bridge to collapse leaving motorists stranded. As if that is not bad enough news, the unfortunate event has cut off communities such as Chibok, Gwoza, Madagali, and Michika, mainly because of the link to the Sambiza forest, which is used by the military. Pedestrians wade through the shallow area with the hope of getting connecting rides to their various destinations. Motorists who dare to brave the torrents are stopped in their tracks, but eventually get help from Samaritans to push or tow the vehicles out of the water. For others, that option will not do, as they turn back to seek other routes which will probably offer miles of discomfort. From Michigan to Mubi normally, when the road is good, it is 600 naira. And so we dragged and dragged until we, had, uh, we began and we paid 400 naira. As the hapless commuters look on, wondering what the next move will be, some are already feeding the gap, chopping up trees and using the logs to construct a makeshift bridge. In the meantime, businessmen groan at the misfortune of being stranded. If you come here with the car, they offload it, we pay, the laborers, they still take it back, another car will be here, then they load it there inside. The chairman of Michika Local Government Council is as concerned as his compatriots. His message is that help should come, and urgently too. I am calling on to the federal government to quickly come to our aid so that at least they should rehabilitate this bridge, cut off, because we are cut off from the state entirely, both Michika and Madagali. A similar devastation is experienced in Niger State, where another bridge collapsed and left accidents in its wake. The driver of this crash tanker was probably traveling at night and unaware of the danger that lay ahead. The train tracks have been derailed by the flood. All vehicular movement is impossible. Commuters make use of the next best option. The cracked ground gives an ominous sign. What makes this case frustrating for the state commissioners on ground is that this event is happening for a second time. The first collapse being a few miles from here. Surely the minister will come to see, look at this. The minister will have to be here because the minister of works has to be here. The minister of transport will also have to be here because this railway, to put it back to, the way, to, put it back to normal position, it's not a day job, it's not a one month more, it's not a three month job. No doubt, much of the blame for this will be placed at nature's doorstep. But could human error be at play? That will probably be answered when all go back to the drawing board to understand what went wrong and map out reconstruction plans that will ensure this never happens again. It's off to Bielsa State now where the state government has declared 
that as of April this year, it had just over 7 billion naira as balance in the state coffers. Briefing journalists in Yanagua, the state capital, the deputy governor, John Jonah, said for the period, the state made 1 billion naira as its internally generated revenue, which is the highest the state has ever recorded. Again, for what has become... Recall that I've earlier reported balance from April 5, which was 12 billion plus. When you reconcile that 12 billion with this minus, the fund available at the end of the month was good. That time, seven billion three hundred and twenty nine million to three hundred twenty eight million nine hundred and ninety two thousand nine hundred and seventy four. Naira 70 copper. That is the income and expenditure report as at the 30th of April 2017. The Deputy Governor of Bios State there, John Jonah. A fatal automobile accident occurred yesterday evening at the Polo Roundabout in Jos, in north-central Nigeria, that's in Plateau State, involving a trailer loaded with drinks. Now, a bullion van belonging to a first-generation bank and two other vehicles, leaving two people dead and two others injured. Eyewitness accounts say the vehicle loaded with supplies was coming from Kaduna to Gombe when the accident occurred owing to brake failure. Now the federal government's implementation committee on the proposed ICT University of Nigeria has given a pass mark to the Enugu campus. The committee was in Enugu to inspect facilities at the proposed site. Meanwhile, the governor of Enugu state, Ifai Ogwai, gave an assurance that his team will get the Enugu campus running. This is the Digital Bridge Institute of the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC Enugu, which is to be converted to ICT University of Nigeria Enugu campus. The federal government had on the 15th of May through the Ministry of Communications appointed an implementation committee to oversee the setting up of ICT University of Abuja, Lagos, Enugu, Kanu, Asaba and Yola where the digital bridge institutes are located. Some of the members of the team led by Dr. Henry Nkamadu are in Enugu to inspect the facilities on the ground and to take words back to the federal government on their findings. I can say that we are very impressed because we can see that uh, this particular campus is ready. Uh, the buildings have been well done. Uh, they, are, they don't show signs of dilapidation and um, some of them have been very well equipped, like the amphitheater. We went around and saw the amphitheater is ready to go. Um, the admin block, which is the block behind me, is also well placed and uh, and cleaned out. The team again makes a stop at the Enugu State Government House where they meet with the governor to share their assessment. Among other things, they want an expansion of the facilities. Governor Uguain tells the team he would make lands available for expansion. This will certainly add to the rising profile of Enugu State as the academic, aviation, and business hall of the region. We are therefore very much obliged as a government to offer all necessary support 
including additional lands like you said. Next in line, according to the team, is the president's approval to get the school running. Expectations are high to see ICT University of Nigeria running across the six geopolitical zones of the country.